this very much is Brooke's idea, um, uh, although, you know, as things happened in standards, uh, we very quickly iterated into some uh, chat channels around this. So um, the Content Address Alliance, what does this mean? What does it mean to work together? I'll start with a premise that essentially is IPFS has won. What does that mean? We've actually spent this time uh, talking about, um, you probably want me recorded, um, what IPFS even is. Um, and I think this, this event has really taught us that there's lots of different pieces and maybe we can back off from um, you know, uh, you uh, hosting your own IPFS node with full lib P2P uh, at home in your basement where you have all your diagrams is probably not the only version of IPFS. So for me, um, my work and involvement in the IPFS community is really inspired by uh, I'm still, uh, I've now spent 20 years working on this problem. What problem? I think that every human being on the planet should be able to put content online and store it there uh, effectively forever um, at uh, effectively zero cost. Um, there was a time when I thought, we'll just get everyone to have their own domain name. And then I learned that domain registrars and $10 a year costs exist, or that if you give people free subdomains, they don't really own them and they can't do anything with them. Uh, I've been really incredibly inspired um, by IPFS as a commons network. Uh, I think we've actually reached that goal, right? It has the technical specifications that allows anyone on the planet to store content effectively forever, effectively for free because of content addressing, meaning you don't need to ask permission to give a shit about a piece of content and help keep it online. You can keep it uh, uh, on your laptop or a little Raspberry Pi or on your phone or put on a USB key um, and when you find it again in a closet somewhere 20 years later, plug it in um, and uh, it will once again become available. That's really important to me. My early involvement in open source was at a time when I was um, uh, uh, a young, privileged North American white male who had some extra time to get involved in open source. And mostly there was North America and Western Europe that was involved. Uh, now I'm a middle-aged, well-off North American white male who, who has this ability, but I wanna make room for everyone and the entire world. Um, that's very important to me. Um, and that's why I gravitated in the extended Web3 multiverse um, to IPFS as a base layer that I was very, very comfortable supporting. Um, persistence is a problem, various other things are a problem and so on, but the base protocols allows everyone to be involved. And so that's what underlies my IPFS as one. Let's encourage everyone that content addressing is a good for the entire world. And I hosted a talk at the beginning of the year about IPFS in space. So I actually am really excited about that as well. So uh, content addressing obviously has a bunch of advantages. That means that stuff isn't stuck in one place. We can move it around, we can do lots of things, and we wanted to get this super powerful idea to get used in more places. So if we look around and see what other people are doing, uh, there's a bytecode alliance and the bandwidth alliance, and the bytecode alliance uh, essentially are the folks improving WebAssembly. And Bandwidth Alliance are people that are uh, mainly taking on Amazon, uh, uh, realistically, who are sharing bandwidth and, and saying we're going to not charge for bandwidth from in this group and uh, we'll host each other's content and we'll send stuff around and we'll just be better together, right? They get together, they talk about stuff, they work on projects together, they think about things, they help each other out, right? It's a, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. I will say that I think it's, it's almost a little bit like what old school companies do because they don't have the fabric of experimenting with a PLN, um, but that's okay. Like this is meant to be a wider umbrella. Uh, I think because we just had a standards talk 
this is not the place where standards happen. You know, people may learn about them and go over into those standards areas, but this is more like, let's be super positive about doing this and working on, give real examples to your point about, oh, my business has a real example of using this. This is where some of that stuff lives over time. Uh, and we can have, you know, pictures of Dietrich shaking hands with another super important person. <laughs> Well, and to Brendan's point from a couple minutes ago, a lot of us are tiny little companies that don't have time to do everything. So let's divide up the problem and attack it and help each other out, right? Which takes me to my next point, uh, know thy enemy, right? Uh, except that's, that's not your enemy, right? They actually love each other. Right? The enemy is Web 2 and <laughs> something, else. something else, right? Like having everything locked in one place and it's like, ah, oh, you know, ProtoClabs is huge and like, oh, no, like ProtoClabs is tiny by comparison to AWS. It's like, doesn't even register, right? So let's do more of this, right? Let's help each other out. Let's realize that we're all in one community and we're going up against really big odds, huge odds, right? So um, Boris gave uh, you know, this, this, this vision and reasoning, and he's the CEO, I'm the CTO, so I'm gonna get down to brass tacks. Um, <laughs> as a starter, we should have things like a trusted backbone. <coughs> the DHT doesn't perform out of the box because of the speed of light. You've gotta go and do all of these lookups, right? We can just get the main service providers where most of the data is going through, so Cloudflare and IPFS.io and Fission and Pinata and whoever else to just share data about what we're storing and what the popular content is and maybe even prefetch that content and help each other share it and serve it. Right? We should all run WebRTC, at least WebRTC star nodes, if not a full mesh. Uh, apparently Matrix has uh, something that uh, coming out shortly in the next whatever few months that will do mesh version of, of WebRTC across, across the internet. That's something that we should run, right? Because WebRTC runs in browsers. WebRTC runs in browsers, right? So like all of these pains that we keep bumping into that we have to set up our own stuff for, why? Let's just help each other out, right? Let's get in a room and say, what's everybody else feeling the pain about? And let's just agree that we're all gonna run this thing, done. And it doesn't have to be everyone in the community, it can be people that are actually running this stuff at scale, right? Or people that really care about it enough to run these things. Because never mind the business side of things, <laughs> physics is a thing, right? <laughs> and uh, you, know, you often hear, well, decentralized systems will never perform because you have to deal with geographic distribution, all this stuff. Cool, let's solve that. Let's just work together, right? Let's get stuff all over the world. IPFS isn't the only content addressed system. Let's talk to other projects and very different things, right? Uh, I was chatting with um, some folks at breakfast this morning about uh, Unison, which is a content addressed language. It has like programming language. Programming language, yeah. Which has. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Which has like slightly different, you know, parts of the design, but that doesn't mean that we can't work together. Nix and NixOS are currently working on a content addressed experiment. Let's bring them in. Let's see how, what they're learning about stuff. Let's see if we can share some of these pieces together and not rebuild everything 100 million times in slightly different variations. Or if they have some reason to go and do that, we should just say, hey, did you know about these things? This is our experience with it and vice versa, right? Let's get out of our bubble. It's really easy to come to events like this, which are amazing, by the way, and meet a bunch of other people in the, in the ecosystem. But we also need to get out of the ecosystem because content addressing is bigger than this. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, th this is sort of a, uh, I think also in, in this project and community track, this is um, a, an RFC uh, for a, perhaps we actually come up with a process uh, within the IPFS ecosystem, within the PLN, 
Um, uh, and I'm very inspired by David Aronchik's uh, um, uh, Compute Over Data Working Group. So I think this follows a similar pattern. Can we like, okay, who's interested? Who wants to work on this? Let's use the IPFS discourse for now as a like default place to talk about it. It might graduate to somewhere else, but um, IPFS Discord chat. So this is me saying, let's use these two places to start with to signaling. What are the goals of the uh, Content Addressing Alliance? Um, should Kaka Kaka be our call? What kind of crow mascot will we build for it? Um, and um, uh, and learn from some of these other orgs. Uh, Brooke said this before. Um, you know the Bicode Alliance, Bandwidth Alliance. But you know, as we thought about this, it's like, uh, can we get PL, who is the largest of us, but will be the smallest in the Bicode Alliance, to you know, join the Bicode Alliance on behalf of all of PLN, as an example. Bandwidth Alliance, that's probably one where we would reach out to folks who work with Filecoin storage providers. Uh, I recently heard that um, a Filecoin SPs generally are already interconnecting. Rather than only interconnecting between themselves, they should also be introduced to the Bandwidth Alliance and, and connected into there, right? So while this has been the, the pitch for uh, the Content uh, Addressed Alliance, this is, in us in general, saying this kind of mesh or network thinking uh, can expand to lots of other areas, and we should actively look for spaces where we can do that like this. So uh, join us in those two spaces. We'll do follow-ups in the project and community track, um, and we'd love to hear your extended questions and comments. Do you have any opinions on like legal incorporation countries, organization types, tax statuses, like that, you know, what, what would this no. be? Okay. <laughs> uh, never or as late as possible. Yeah, actually, I, I, I guess another pattern that I will like promote in general, because um, I'm always looking for reusable tools for a bunch of these things. Um, and if we immediately dive into the who's the president of the CAA Alliance sort of thing like that, that'll be awkward. Um, uh, 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 communication areas is a great way to start with um, in, in different areas. Uh, open Collective um, is uh, a way to basically get um, a bank account um, so that without having to create an organization first. So that might be a pattern that we do in general uh, of flowing through things there. Uh, again, I think we'll start with like basically minimal or contributed resources so we won't immediately have, you know, costs sort of thing. But, you know, can we avoid creating um, an org and not have the operations overhead would be the kind of way to start, I think. I just wanted to comment on the fact that uh, you're really encouraging the use of the forum. Um, I'm pretty new to the community, and, and one of the things that I've really noticed is that uh, uh, we're losing so many of our efforts that we're putting into uh, Discord chats. Um, I think using a platform like Discord, and I think uh, like Discourse, um, and a forum that we own, I think is is a great public forum uh, for us to be able to retain this information and to scale our community. Um, so I really appreciate that, and I hope that we can really try to keep whatever's on Discord as something that is truly ephemeral and, and try to retain the information on something like Discourse. Um, that's just one comment that I wanted to make, and thank you for that uh, effort, even with IPFS thing that you've been uh, really pushing for it. Um, the second thing is more of an open question. Um, I think one of the key things that seems to be obvious from this presentation, just from an understanding of the internet, is that Building software can go a long way, um, but we do really rely on real infrastructure. And, and Cloudflare has done an immense, uh, immensely helpful job in really promoting that idea by investing in IPFS. Um, but I think that we really need to think about having more of these players. And I wonder what the opportunities that are sort of in our blind spot. You know, you love to put that image of the side mirror of the car where objects seem, may seem closer than they actually are. Um, I would love to know what's in the blind spot uh, when it comes to opportunities in terms of like internet infrastructure operators, like uh, I, I don't know how they're pronounced, Askami, Askami, the, the big CDN, Akamai, Akamai. Mm -hmm. Akamai. Um, just as an example, throwing it out there, but would love to hear your thoughts. 
Yes. I, I, we, I, we, we should definitely talk to them, it, all of them. I, I think um, the Unison is a good example. Nix is a good example where um, there have been various efforts, possibly at the wrong time or too early or various other things like that. Th this event is, is, is an understanding that IPFS is bigger than Kubo. Um, and, you know, and Juan has had some previous talks about uh, trying to explain this in different ways uh, that I really re resonate with as well is um, including the like, ah, oh, you can't make a performant IPFS node in Python. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's in Python. So <laughs> Pythonic people will be like, cool, here's a thing that I can use. So it's, and, and the spec process is needed and a bunch of other things like that, right? Um, to, to blow these things apart a little bit. So this is a slightly different layer. This is again, actually the software piece. Um, um, and then that other layer of um, um, uh, what opportunities are there for larger entities to use IPFS? If we solve real customer problems, people will adopt it. Right? So I want more examples like um, um, uh, Netflix um, lowering their bandwidth costs dramatically um, by uh, using IPFS to push uh, Docker images around. Um, you know, um, there's various other things. So uh, this is a meta thing. We, we need to, to uh, showcase what's possible, promote content addressing as a concept, and then people are like, oh, I could use it for X and support those people with a software stack of doing a proof of concept of X. And right again, this is all long road stuff. Never mind the standardization part kind of thing. Um, but I think there's lots of areas and there's another meta area where um, um, turns out I don't um, have a large enough team, enough money, enough time, enough focus to be like, I have another crazy idea. Where do I put it down and see if three other people are interested in funding it and getting a proof of concept. So I think that's a meta thing that I'd like to support. Um, I have a... Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to tell you a specific example. Well, I mean, one of those things is, in fact, taking content out of Discord chats and having um, an IPFS bot that turns, you just had an amazing chat for uh, an hour with a group of people um, that then takes it and pushes it to IPFS. And you just, you know, like, that is an actual useful thing that you take stuff that's currently trapped in Discord chats and only ephemeral and you give it a content address. I think there are many, 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 many Discord servers that are like, that's super useful. Same thing with discourse, by the way, which is a content address. And so it'd be nice if we could just like leapfrog discourse <laughs> into like content address social stuff. That's a, a nice segue maybe into the question that I was going to ask is that content addressing brings a lot of benefits, but also challenges. And one of the things that Protocol Labs does and anybody else who's running production IPFS infrastructure is handle the parts where it's a maybe a personal, like a doxing or a personal information leakage in that Discord chat that you just pushed up to content addressing and a bunch of people are also saving and serving. Um, how, how do you see the content address alliance participating in that type of conversation and representing both sides of content addressing. <laughs> I mean, look, it, the, the idea really is to just have it to be a place where people can take, actually, so PL has done a lot of this stuff just directly for a long time, right? Just as a single org. That works, but it also means that uh, you know, PL isn't running this as an operator with customers, right? It doesn't have that perspective, that point of view, and can, like, does things for the health of the network, does, like, all of this stuff, right? But, like, I don't know, at, at one point we ended up running the IPFS operators group because we were like, well, surely, surely the problem is us. We're holding IPFS wrong. And got a bunch of other people in the room who were like, oh, we thought that we were doing it wrong too. Um, and other than the fact that realizing that was helpful and then let us go down a layer and say, okay, well, here, let's actually fix the, these parts, right? Um, having those kinds of uh, 
groups where you, you, then you can share the responsibility, right, is just helpful and have a place to discuss them yeah. and talk about them. Right? I, I think this is the point um, is uh, we start having a decision tree, right, of like, oh, is it, it, it's not a standards thing. It might be an advocacy thing or might be other thing. That's a great content address alliance home for the, those discussions. Oh, great. We've done something that probably should get turned into a standard. Wheel in, Dietrich, if you like. Uh, so I, I, think, I think that starts giving that and making it that the root is not, in fact, inside PLPLN, but in being like, no, no, it's. I, I love that vision. Uh, I think one challenge might be if the if the approach so far is to make it a real organization as late as possible, it, you also might be pushing off your ability to have real impact on some of those problems to actually be that. So, so uh, yeah, I, I think I think more like um, um, uh, maybe that's a uh, not me call in the sense <laughs> in the sense that let's convene, let's talk about it. Um, um, it, it will come about the the purpose of the working group around this will be to birth the CAA. And like, that's the first thing of figuring out what it looks like, who's gonna throw in the first couple of bucks, we'll pass the hat, put people inside of it. So ra rather than like learn from the W3C, rather than four universities in a trench coat, we can maybe <laughs> be a little further ahead. So the, the other thing is like, even putting this presentation together, it's like, well, what's the bounds of a content stress alliance? Because we had different ideas of where the bounds were. <laughs> The line that I've been saying this entire event is uh, we're still at the food, water, and shelter part of the hierarchy, right? Like, I need my stuff to work, and it needs to run faster, and that means I need collaboration from other people, right? Um, and it can't all sit on PL's shoulders all the time, right? And getting more people involved and who are running things at scale, right? And so it's, it's my conception of it, which could be completely wrong and not the way this thing goes entirely, right, is uh, less standards and more informal. So, and, and not just that. So um, various technical people will be very uncomfortable with this, but it turns out that we have to do marketing and advocacy as well. Uh, and we, in fact, we're going to need to do it ahead of things being fully baked because that kind of marketing and advocacy takes a while. Um, and, um, and, and ideally what we will say to you is we will bring you people, um, who will have a constant set of real user needs that should inform how you're thinking about technical solutions and, and needs, which is probably, okay, one more. Sure. I don't know, maybe. That would, would have been a really great <laughs> ending point. Did you? Let's keep, go. keep going. Yeah. Okay. I, I was going to say, um, I think we're immediately running into the question of scope and like, where does this thing scope? And I'd like, the thing that I would like to sort of like plus one is this idea of like, can we just start on some of the like rough consensus and working code basis of, uh, I think there's some great opportunities in sending data to each other, starting to establish and broaden the spectrum of reliable partners who are understanding and starting to think longer term into, okay, I'm now committing to being a part of a network and having a certain uptime and availability time. And like, can we then extend and add to the number of bootstrap nodes so that we actually see that those bootstrap nodes are cross-organizational. And like that, I think, would be another method. But if we're going to do that right, we need a mechanism for, like, let's be real, startups fail. We have to figure out how we like, get those out when they're not no longer reliable. How do we transition those? Like, if we do that well, I think that starting with some of those practical things may really help us be a, you know, use case driven and get these organizations really understanding what their commitment is looking like over quarters, years. Absolutely. And, and I, think that, I think the point here is, is like, remember, this is not, not technical, right, in, either, right? But it, 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 in fact, is like, oh, right, the IPFS operators group should, in fact, be a portion of CAA. <laughs> um, and, and it's closer to that, you know. Uh, like, and again, there's other things that have been done. This, uh, uh, Canada has the uh, Canary Network, which is a, uh, backbone of uh, university high-speed fiber. The CAA would go to Canary and be like, you should run some content addressing stuff on that backbone that you just have sitting around, right? Like, oh, an academic channel. Yes. One of the things I've been uh, wondering about, again, but we're like super tiny. I'm like, Brooke, 
we sure do do a lot of these research papery things. We should probably like talk to more universities. And I think this is the point is that can we have a root um, that is not just one more thing that um, uh, PL has to do, uh, right? So this, this is also a recognition of, of like sharing that um, operational, organizational, energy-wise load, right? Of like, I just want to like plus one the notion of that canary example as like the amount of like nation state central bank capital versus like just private equity capital, which just feels like a subset. Like, well, only I, my hypothesis will is more likely to flow to something like a consortium or a foundation versus a debt like Delaware C Corp. And like that could be extremely powerful for the impact. We could all have them. absolutely so like goal. We should try and get the European Next Generation Internet Consortium to become a member of the CAA. <laughs> caca, caca. <laughs> um, I can see the mascot now. <laughs> all right, Brooklyn Boris, thank you so much for sharing these.